Hello, it's International Piano Day and I'm going to talk a little bit about this piano and what makes it different right now, which is the tuning system. Uh, the temperament that is used here, um, which has been set up by Gavin from Crown Pianos, is not the equal temperament system which is used in most pianos today. Um, give or take a few tweaks, that's what tuners will use so that each um, key sounds the same. And this is an idea which really only truly became the norm in the 20th century, actually. Uh, and so it's very interesting to have the piano tuned in an 18th century system. This is the system which has been decoded by Brad Lehman, um, and he makes a very strong case for this being the system that Bach would have used in the well-tempered clavier. And what that means is in the, in the um, home keys of C major and G major and F major, the white keys, we have very pure triads. And if you compare that vibration there between C and E um, with an equal tempered piano, you'll find that this is a little bit gentler. But that isn't the case in all the keys. And that explains, I think, why Bach didn't write this sort of prelude in C sharp major, which is wider and slightly more sour than in equal temperament. Let's go back to C. So if you have headphones that you can really hear that C major is very gentle, but C sharp major is very bright. So instead, when he's in a key like C sharp, we don't get too many of those thirds and tenths. just bouncing off them and that distracts us from the slightly wide sound as against the calmer thirds. And Bach writes the preludes in F major and G major in a very similar way using lots of arpeggiation and possibly then indicating that the chords might be held over a bit like pedaling on the piano um, because the sonority of those keys is very warm, very gentle. F major. Or G major. Now I'm very curious about one particular piece from the book one of the World Tempered Clavier. Um, which is the E major prelude, because E major is Bach's most out of tune third, the E to the G sharp. Which if you're not used to thirds that wide, um, sounds somewhat harsh and unpleasant. And in fact, Bach does write something which is quite harmonic. So we get to hear some of that harshness. And I think there's a reason why, but we'll come to that in a little bit in a little while. So here's the beginning of the E major prelude. And we can hear that in this particular bar, a lot of thirds sounding rather course, if that had been written a semitone high in F major, is a little bit sweeter. But in E major, we're getting 
those slightly rougher sounding tenths. There's also a fascinating passage further on which modulates to B major, which is also a bit out of tune from an equal tempered standpoint, where Bach puts in some very peculiar chromaticism. <laughs> B major chord sounding again slightly wide there. Um, this chromaticism doesn't sound um, so painful in F major. Um, so and that's resolving to C major, which is of course his purest triad, as we've already seen. Um, so we have that effect in the piece which I think is a reference to the bagpipes which I think were around quite a lot um, through the history of music. We tend to forget about the bagpipes today but they were sort of omnipresent um, in the history of other forms of music like classical music and classical composers made reference to them. Quite, uh, there's quite numerous examples of that. So I think Bach has given us in the E major prelude this very rustic, slightly uh, coarse sounding key, um, which intensifies the effect of this folk reference. The piece is full of drones as well. It has some very long held bass notes. Um, Bach can't bring himself to stay on the same bass note for very long because he's always wanting to modulate. There is a piece which he does that in, which is the organ Pastorella, um, which is in F. Um, much more harmonious key but in in this one it's in e and i'm going to play a little bit more of it now so you can hear the the, the mood created by this his harshest key if we're to believe brad layman in F major. effect of the two is very different. So here we have a piano where every single key creates a slightly different mood, a slightly different vibration um, which is noticeable in the thirds, the major and the minor thirds. So I'm really enjoying working through the well-tempered clavier um, in this temperament. Um, um, surprisingly enough the temperament works in lots of other music too. Um, in fact, if you take these two G sharps, which are a little bit the, the widest G sharps, if you take those down very, very slightly, um, it all works very nicely for most repertoire. So I might stick with it. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if I hit anything that's um, too painful. But for Bach, it's great. So enjoy the rest of International Piano Day. <laughs>